some actually pretty big news was dropped today from Meta, of course, giving us the sweet acronym of Manga, in which I get to be a part of the N of Manga. But nonetheless, they said something that actually quite surprised me, and I'd like to kind of think about these implications. So one of the first things that they talk about is actually recommending Rust for performance-sensitive backends. Now, I think this just makes sense inherently. If you're already writing things in C++, Rust is just going to be a safer, way better alternative to C++, and I just fully agree with that. This is just simply a good move. So them, them recommending this is not really big news, and I think there was some focus on this, which I think is the wrong place to focus. I think the real big place to focus is this right here. Now, it says for CLI tools, we recommend Rust. Now, to me, that is incredibly big news. What this means to me is that they have observed building CLI tools in probably tons of languages. I assume there's a bunch in Node, there's a bunch in Python, C++, Hack, if they can, I have no idea. And of course, some emerging tools in Rust. And what they're probably observing is that tools written in Rust, those slower probably to begin with to get started, tend to be better maintained, probably have less problems, and eventually have better velocity and kind of that mid-level. That is my guess. And that is why they're recommending this, because they would never over-recommend a CLI tool from Python to Rust, right? Python is fast. So there must be really good reasons, and I just doubt that it comes down to performance and solely performance. And so what does this mean for us? Well, eh, what I think it means is that Carbon was right, that you should use Rust and not Carbon, okay? Don't do that, that's stupid. No, but really, what does it mean? It means that something is shifting within our ecosystem much faster than I thought it was gonna happen. I thought 2023, we should start seeing the uh, larger companies really leaning into Rust. I did not expect it this early into 2022, which means that I myself have already already been going down this path of learning Rust, but it's time for me to lean in even more. And I think it'd be a good recommendation for you to lean in even more. A good place to start, of course, is exactly what they said. Build some CLI tools using Rust. See how it feels. See if it's the right place for you to kind of excel at. And yeah, of course, learning Rust is just awful. It is a very hard language to begin with. But once you get going, it becomes easier and easier. But I don't think you should just stop at CLI tools. I do think it's very valuable to build about four or five servers that you could make last for some amount of time, say three weeks without crashing at all. That way you really get the idea of proper error handling. Check out this error versus anyhow. Play with Serday, play with Clap. Really just understand some of the primary libraries used in the ecosystem along with Tokyo, Async Rust, all of that. I think by the time you get through building a few CLI applications plus a few servers, you're going to feel pretty adept with the language. And you're going to really understand its capabilities. Because when I first started using Rust, I, I mostly found it annoying. I thought it was way too pedantic. I didn't want anything to do with it. And honestly, it's just a pain in the ass. And I largely agree with that initial assessment. It is kind of a pain in the ass. But benefits that I've seen down the road are fairly big. And the type system is just out of this world. I want to use it all the time when programming something like TypeScript, which is so close to it, but at the same time, so far from it. It's a lot like learning JavaScript. If you were to start a career today, I would just recommend knowing JavaScript uh, to the point where it's, you're, it's a pretty good language for you. You can build things fairly and naturally fast because it's just used everywhere. But I think that the next wave coming in is not going to be more TypeScript. I do think it's going to be something different. And I think that something different is going to be Rust. And I think we're going to get into this weird bimodal nature coming up where you have JavaScript on one side and you have Rust on the other side. And people will be able to largely choose where they want to be. Now, I always have a soft spot for Go. I think it's a beautiful language, but I think for the next year, my primary focus personally is going to be on Rust, and this article is going to be one of the primary drivers for why I'm going to get even more intense about learning it and becoming a master of it. And I do think you should too. Now, I know that's a bit of a hot take, and you know, that's just what I do. I take a little bit of a hot take here and there, okay? It's just I can't help it. But one other thing that I think is pretty awesome, look at this. We are about to cross 100,000 subs, so if you haven't subbed before, hey, do it! And I really want to do something awesome for that 100,000 mark. So if you have ideas, say it down below in the comments. Personally, I have a really good idea that involves a button, an Arduino, a server, Rust, Zig, and Go, and try to make the world's most complicated button that does something extremely special gonna do that all on Twitch. But if you have some other ideas, let me know. 
Get on in. You gotta talk to me so I know what you want. Anywho, thanks for watching. I, I love you. But seriously, press the like button. Bruh.